Um, hello class. So in this video, we're going to cover 10.3, which is the inverse of a square matrix. Now let me set my focus to standard because otherwise it's going to keep shaking like that every time we do something. Uh, okay. So we will talk about how to find an inverse. And then of course, we'll work with finding an inverse of a two by two. And we may even get as far as um, finding an inverse of a three by three. Um, but let's go ahead and start the process. So it says here, um, we'll further develop the algebraic matrices just like there were inverse functions there are inverse matrices, okay? So you could have one matrix that will undo another. For instance, if you applied a matrix A to, or it, it's very similar, okay? So pretend these are capital letters and they represent matrix. If you apply a matrix A to a variable matrix X, you would end up with a certain output, right? So if you multiply these two, you have this result. Well, what they're saying is that if you multiply by the inverse of A on the left-hand side, multiplying it on the right-hand side would not help me resolve the situation with the A because it would be next to X instead. And we know that matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning that you can't just swap the order of the multiplication, okay? Um, but if I do multiply by the inverse on the left, I also have to multiply the inverse on the left over here. And then we know that, or by definition, inverses undo, right? So this one and this one should basically cancel themselves out. Truly what they do is these give you the identity matrix. And we did discuss in a previous section that the identity matrix times any matrix is just that matrix itself, okay? Um, and so then we have now solve for the uh, variable matrix, okay? And so this technique is actually going to be used to solving systems, because we know if we have the coefficient matrix, we have the variable matrix, and then we have the constant matrix, like in a system of linear equations. If you notice, you can find the solutions for that just by using this formula. So if I wanted to solve for all of my variables, all I would need to do is multiply the inverse of that coefficient matrix times the constant matrix, and I will get all the solutions for x, y, and z, or x1, y1, uh, x3, whatever variables there are, okay? Um, now, in a regular situation, this was multiplication, right? And so if you multiply by the inverse of a, which in back then was 1 over a, which can be written as a to the negative 1, right? Um, when you multiply 1 over a times a, you just get the value 1, okay? And so you would multiply this 1 over a on both sides, right? And so then you would still have it over here. Again, just to say, show you what I'm saying in words, it's the equivalent of dividing both sides by a, right? And then you get b over a as your answer for x. Well, remember, this can be written as 1 over a times b, which can be written as a to the negative 1 exponent um, b, okay? So just showing you the correlation that if you were to write it like this, it looks exactly like what's happening in the matrices, okay? So um, we do need to define the matrix, right? Um, so a matrix, an inverse matrix, essentially just like a regular inverse, is gonna undo what an original matrix does. So if I multiply two inverses together, just like one over A times A, or A times one over A, doesn't matter what order they're in, don't the A's just cancel and I get one, okay? So it's essentially what's the same thing here, except with matrices, it's not the value one, it's a whole identity matrix. And you don't know what that um, identity, the dimensions of the dimension, uh, identity matrix are going to be, unless you know what the uh, dimensions of A is, and then the inverse should have the same dimensions, okay? Um, so it is important that you do realize that you can only take inverses of square matrices. So they'll either be two by twos, three by threes, four by fours, and so forth, okay? So here's an example. It says, show that B is the inverse of A. 
Well, in order for me to show that, I essentially have to show that if I multiply them this way, or if I multiply them this way, I should end up with the identity matrix, okay? So they did take this one times this one, and remember, it, for each position, it's that row and that column of that position. So if I wanna find the values for this top left position, that's the uh, first row and the first column. So I would take these two numbers right here times these two guys right there, okay? So it'd be negative one times one and two times one like this. And I literally do this, uh, I'm gonna try to do it with pencils because my fingers are real giant in comparison to this paper. But what you're doing is you're taking these guys um, and you're multiplying them like this. So notice how the hand turns over, right? Let me use two different paint colors so you can see what I'm seeing here. Here, look, we'll do blue and, and red. There's some lint on that one. <laughs> okay, so notice that if I take these two, okay, this is if my hand were facing downward, okay? So we'll put the little um, pins downward. So these two, and then if you turn your hand over, notice that those are the ones that are getting multiplied. Actually, it does not turn over. It just slides over. So you have this times this. Notice that my hand does not turn over. So here times here. So that's why the negative one is getting multiplied by this one. And then the two over here is getting multiplied by this one down here, okay? And that's the way it works for each position. So let's say I want to take um, this guy. So that's the top row and the second column. So I'll do this again. The top row times the second column. So the negative one gets multiplied by the negative two and the two gets multiplied by the negative one. And these are the results. Then similarly for here, it's the second row, but the first column. So that's the second row and the first column. So negative one times one and one times one, and that's the results. And then finally, the second row, second column. So that's second row and second column. Negative one times two is two, and one times negative one is negative one. And then you just combine all the values and you end up with one, zero, zero, one, which is the identity matrix of a two by two, okay? So it does turn out to work for this one. This one does equal i, but now you want to verify whether um, b times a also equals i. Because remember what we learned in the 10.2 section that when you take the product in a different order, it could be something different, okay? So let's go work with b, a. So we're going to take these two. Um, I do turn my hand over. Oh, it's because I do it from the bottom and then I have to turn my hand over. But if you do it from the top, you just slide it over. That's what it is. Because I was like, I know I turn my hand. <laughs> but if you go from the bottom, you do have to turn it. So notice that my pointer finger, um, my pointer finger is on the one. And then when I turn, it's on the negative one. So one times negative one is negative one. Negative two times negative one is positive two. And then you combine those. Again, I already went through all of that. So you can look at that and examine it, pause it if you need to, to verify that all those products are correct. Um, but you do end up getting the identity matrix, okay? Now, not all square matrices have inverses. That's important to know, okay? Um, if a matrix has an inverse, then that matrix is called invertible or non-singular. Okay, if it does not have an inverse, then it's called singular. Okay, so a non square matrix cannot have an inverse as well. Okay, so there are square matrices. You know, you fit the criteria, yeah, I'm a square matrix, so I should have an inverse, but not all matrices have square matrices have inverses. Okay, um, it depends on if that matrix is a singular or non singular. Okay. Now, I don't know that we discussed what makes it singular or not non-singular just yet. I think we won't talk about that until 10.4 when we get to talk about something called a determinant, okay? And it's called a determinant because it determines whether or not the um, matrix is singular or non-singular. Basically, whether the matrix has an inverse or it doesn't. 
and it is a simple comp uh, computation. For a two by two, it's simple. For a three by three, it gets more complicated, okay? Um, what I would suggest is if, if you're working through this section and you are not doing a two by two, you are doing a three by three, you won't know that it's not invertible or you won't know that it doesn't have an inverse until you try to find one. And then as you're working on it, you end up with the whole row that has zeros in it. On When I say on either side, you'll understand what I mean by the time I finish this section, okay? Um, so so that's, that's that conversation, okay? So I just want you to keep in mind that there's, they don't throw all the information at you. They kind of give it to you little, little by little by little, but some of it I feel like is irrelevant at certain points in time, okay? So um, here it says, um, to see this note that when A is of order M and N and B is of order N by N, where M and does not equal N because they're not square, right? Then these products are gonna have different orders. So if I multiply A first and B next, it's gonna have an M by M result. Whereas if I swap the order, then it's actually the Ms that will cancel and I'll end, by an, end up with an N by N after I multiply. And those are not the same, right? Because they would be totally different uh, um, degrees, okay? And an inverse uh, function cannot have multiple inverses. That was just the basic definition of inverses, right? The functions or whatever it is has to be one-to-one. -one. And if you can use one and get two, then it's not one-to-one, -one, okay? So that kind of conversation still holds with um, matrices, okay? So, and it says not all um, square matrices have inverse. However, a matrix does have an inverse that is you, and that inverse is unique. So again, you're not supposed to have more than one, just one, okay? Um, and then it says example two shows how to use the system of equations to find the inverse of the matrix. So here you have this. And if I want to find the matrix, I'm going to explain kind of how this works, okay? What you do is you place the matrix you've been given. And just like when I was solving the systems of equations, you're going to put a big bar here, okay? I know in the computer, it always likes to put three little dots for the top row and three little dots for the bottom row. That's just too much every single time I have to rewrite this. So I just put one big line, okay? Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to put the identity matrix of the same degree on the or the same order on the other side, same dimensions. So since this is a two by two, I put a two by two identity matrix here. Now the goal is to perform all your all row operations like you do when you're solving the systems in 10.1. But the goal is to make the left hand side look like the identity. So you want to turn this into one zero zero one. And then once you've done that, whatever's over here will now be your, your inverse, okay? So we already actually have this one. That one is good to go. So the next one I'm gonna work on is getting this one to turn to zero. And I really don't need to multiply by anything because this is already a positive one. So it's just gonna be row one plus row two to give me that new row two. Um, and I want a new row two because I want that zero there, right? So row one has these entries and row two has these entries. And so I end up with zero, one, 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 right? When you add these, you get one. When you add those, you get one. So this becomes um, one, four, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Then and I have the one here that I need as well. So these guys are all set up, ready to go. I just need to turn this one into a zero. And to do that, I'm gonna need a negative four. So I'm gonna do um, down here, I'm gonna do negative four times row two plus row one so that I could get a new row one with the zero in that spot, okay? And so let's see what we have here. Um, negative four times row two would be zero, negative four, negative four, negative four. Row one would be one, four, one, zero. So the result is going to be 1, 0, negative 3, negative 4. So that's my new row 1. And row 2 stayed exactly the same. And I do have the identity matrix over here. So what this tells me is that 
a inverse is actually equal to negative three, negative four, one, and one. Okay. And again, you can always pause that if you need to, to see it slow down or anything like that. But that is the um, result. And so I do have my inverse here. Okay. Now, um, we do have an extra um, method. Okay, so that was one method. Now they're gonna introduce a second method. Okay. Um, and the second method only applies for two by two matrices. So I don't usually use this second method just because I always like to use one thing that works for everything. In that method that I showed you now, where you put the original matrix on one side, and then you put the um, identity matrix on the other side, um, in that situation, if that always works, okay? As long as you can turn the original into the identity, whatever's over here on the other side is the inverse. That works for two by twos, three by threes, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, this method only is for just specifically two by twos, but that's not what we're always given. So I don't prefer this, but I have to teach it. We have to at least been shown it. Okay. So here it is. <laughs> um, so if you have a matrix like this, okay, what they do is they compute this value. They multiply going this way. Um, I don't know of a word to describe this, but it's a diagonal, but how do you distinguish this diagonal from that diagonal, okay? I when we read, we read from left to right. So I'm going to have the assumption that I'm talking about left to right. And as if I'm looking at this going left to right, it's actually going downward. So I'm gonna say it's the downward diagonal product meaning you multiply the A and the D together, and that's what you get here. And then you subtract the upward diagonal product. So then I'm gonna multiply this way going upward, okay? So the one that went, again, left to right, the one that went downward left to right is the one that goes in front of the minus, and the one that went upward as you read it from left to right is the upward diagonal product. I can't come up with any better way to say that. I'm hoping that that is enough and that makes sense, okay? But you make sure that you you remember you're reading it from left to right, okay? You do have to visualize it from left to right. So from left to right, this is going down. From left to right, this is going up, okay? Um, and that value there that you're computing, this value here is called the determinant. Remember I told you they're gonna talk about that in 10.4? We will. So they're kind of introducing it to you here, but it's only for two by twos, okay? It does get a lot more complicated um, with three by threes and four by fours and greater, okay? So it's not so nice and cutthroat like it is for two by twos, okay? Um, so that's why there's a whole section dedicated to it. So we'll talk about that one when we get there. Um, and then I'll actually show you a shortcut for three by threes, okay? Because for the most part, you guys are mostly gonna just be seeing two by twos and three by threes in this course. However, if you are an engineer and you do take some of the higher um, engineering courses, you may have matrices that are four by fours or five by fives, oops, um, or whatever the case may be. Okay, so you do have some matrices that are of higher order um, and you definitely need to know the long way to do it so that you could do those, but there is a shortcut for the three by threes as well. And it's amazing because if once I show you that long way and then you learn the shortcut, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, it's so easy. Um, so this is it, this is the determinant, it's our introduction, okay. But notice this formula that they gave us to find an inverse. So I could put one over what I find when I did that crisscross. And then notice that they swap the A and the D positions. And then they swap the B and the C positions. But when they swap these, they also change the signs. Okay. So they're essentially saying that if I do this, I should be able to find that inverse. Okay. Um, so they give me... I don't want to do it for that problem. Actually, I want to do it for the one we just did just to get the same answer. So here, if I find the determinant, 
um, one over a d minus b c, and then I should have d a and then negative c negative b. Do they change? No, they don't even change. They don't swap positions. They just change signs. So the other ones change positions, and then these just change signs. Okay. So these switched positions, and then these just change signs. So what would I have here? I would have one over, if I do the downward, that would be negative three minus, and then if I did the upward, I would have negative four. Then the matrix itself, if I swapped those, it would be negative three here and one there. And then if I change the signs of these, it would be negative four up here and positive one down there. And let me compute this value that actually becomes plus. So negative three plus four is just one. And so you actually do end up with just one times this matrix. And we know with scalar multiplication, you're just multiplying every single term by one, which means none of those terms are gonna change. And if you notice, that is the exact same thing that we got when we did it the other way. So for two by twos, it's super helpful, that little formula. But when you get to three by threes, there's no such formula, okay? So we will have to do it um, the longer way when we get to three by threes. Okay, next page. So now it says, um, if possible, find the inverse of each matrix. Now here's where I'm gonna get to have that discussion on when the inverse is not possible. Because remember they mentioned that. They said sometimes your matrices are called singular and sometimes they're non-singular. The singular ones, you cannot find an inverse. That's why it says if possible, because one of these guys is singular, okay? Now for the matrix A, in order for me to apply that formula, I do have to obtain that determinant, right? Just get used to this. This is called the determinant. And they do usually use a capital D to describe it, even though it's not a matrix. I don't know why they use a capital D, but I know that they do, okay? Um, actually, no, they don't. I'm thinking of something else, Kramer's rule, which is in 10.5, and it's something different. They are matrices. So I use little b, okay? So lowercase d is the determinant, and that is just a number, not a matrix. So if I do that, I multiply the downward one, I get six, minus, and if I multiply the upward one, I get positive two, but six take away two is four, okay? Um, and so that is my determinant. And because, or not because, but I can keep going, right? So then the formula says it has to be one over that determinant, so one over four, and then you swap the position. So these two guys are gonna swap. So there they are swapped. And then these two guys are gonna stay put, but change sign. And so notice it's a positive one and a positive two now. And then if I multiply each one of these by one four, um, I do end up with this here, okay? So I end up with this as my inverse. So this is my inverse. Now for B, part B is right here. This is the matrix. So when I go to find that determinant, I'm gonna be doing this guy times this guy, which is um, six minus the upward, which is also a positive six, and six take away six is zero. You cannot have one over zero. And that is why you cannot use the formula. And actually the fact that the determinant is zero is why it is not invertible. So if your determinant equals zero, um, there is no inverse. And that fact is true regardless of whether it's a two by two or a three by three or a four by four. So regardless of its dimensions, if the determinant is zero, there is no inverse, okay? So a lot of times to save yourself from all those row operations with the bigger matrices, they usually just make sure that it even has an inverse before they start because otherwise you could be doing all these computations and taking a really long time just to find out that there's no inverse, okay? So that fact will come in handy um, in the future, okay? Um, 
Now we talked about this already, right? We talked about if we had an equation like that, you can multiply both sides by the inverse and you end up with this. So you can find a solution to a systems of equations by using the inverses, okay? Now normally they make you find the inverse um, and sometimes they'll take it easy on you and actually give you the inverse, okay? That's always nice when that happens. It just doesn't happen all the time, so sorry. Um, and I am going to actually find an inverse of a three by three. So here it says, um, it says to use gosh darn elimination to find a inverse, and then it gives you a inverse, okay? Um, just FYI, when you're solving these problems on your own, you're not gonna, um, you're gonna have to do that part on your own. So I'm actually gonna do this and find these values, not just say, oh, here's what it is, okay? Also, because I know in the homework, you're gonna have to find some inverses of three by threes, and I want you to have at least an example, okay? Um, so we have this here, I'm gonna put it into this form, AX equals B. So the A matrix is the coefficient matrix. So it's one, 0 0.06, one, one, 0 0.075, and no Y's in the bottom equation, one, 0 0.095, and negative two. Then my X matrix is my variables only. So, this is x, then y, then z. Now remember, when you multiply these times these, that's going to be the coefficient of x, that one the coefficient of y, and this one the coefficient of z, just as it is. Equal to the constant function, which is 10,000, 730, and 0. Okay? Now the goal is, is that you want to have this. If I follow the steps there, it says that X is supposed to be A inverse B. So this is supposed to be this guy's inverse times the coefficient matrix. The issue is, is what is the inverse, okay? Now I know they gave it to you down here, but that's not always the case. So I'm gonna actually find it and we'll verify that it is actually this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, to find that inverse is I'm gonna set my stuff up. So I'm gonna have that matrix A And then I'm going to put a three by three identity matrix on the other side. So I'm going to have a one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. A whole diagonal of ones and zeros everywhere else. Now I do need to get the one up here first because the goal is to turn this into this. Okay. So I do have the one, but I need to use that one to make both of these guys turn to zero. So for that one, I need a negative 0 0.06. I'm gonna multiply that by the row with the leading one, add this row to give me my new row with the zero there. Then over here, I need a negative one. So I'm gonna do negative one times the row with the leading one plus the row I'm trying to change to give me my new row I'm trying to change, okay? Now let's see. This is going to be negative 0 0.06, negative 0 0.06. I'm cutting out the zero because it's too much writing. Um, negative 0 0.06, negative 0 0.06, and then 0, 0. Then these guys underneath. So 0 0.06, 0 0.075, 0 0.095, 0, 0, 1, and 0. And the results I get are zero. Let me see this calculator uh, on clear. Negative 0 0.6, 0.06 plus 0 0.075 is 0 0.015. Negative 0 0.06 plus 0 0.095, I get 0 0.035. This would be negative 0 0.06, this would be one, and that would be zero. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but for row one and row three. 
So I'm gonna have a negative times all of these. So negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, zero, zero. Then row three underneath, one, zero, negative two, zero, zero, one. And I get zero, negative one, negative three, negative one, zero, and one. So let's find our new matrix. Row one is going to stay the same. Row two is going to become this. So 0 0.015, 0 0.035, 0 um, negative 0 0.06, 1, and 0. And then row three is going to become this. 0, negative 1, negative 3, negative 1, 0, and 1. So the goal next is to turn this term into a 1, because I need that diagonal to be all 1s. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one over this number times that row. And that will give me my new second row. So row one will stay exactly the same. And row three will stay exactly the same. The only one that's changing here is that middle row. And I do have to have that changed first before I can change these two guys into zeros. Okay. So let me see. I know zero divided, remember multiplying by the reciprocal is the same as dividing. So I know that zero divided by anything is still gonna be zero. And I know that this number divided by itself is gonna be one. What I don't know is these other numbers. Ooh, that should be a fraction because I cannot have that. Look what I got. I cannot have this decimal and I cannot round it. It has to be an exact. So I'm gonna hit my double arrow and that's actually seven thirds. Unfortunately, I have fractions. Negative 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.015. That one's not a fraction, nice. Um, and then one divided by 0 0.015. That one is an ugly fraction, so I'm gonna to have to double arrow it. And I get 200 over three and then zero divided by anything is still zero, okay. So, so far, so good. This is what we have. Um, now I need to change these two things into um, zeros. So I need that one and that one. For the top one, I am going to need a negative one. So I'm going to write negative one times the row with the leading zero, the leading one. So times row two plus row one to give me my new row one with the zero there. For the bottom, um, I need a positive one and this is already a positive one. So it's just gonna be row two the way it is, plus row three to give me my zero in row three. So let's see here for row two. We get zero, negative one, negative seven thirds, positive four, negative 200 over three and zero. And if I add row one underneath that, let's see what we get. We have one, zero, um, negative seven over three plus one is negative four thirds. This is five, that stays the same and this stays the same. Now row two plus row one. Is zero, negative, negative zero one. And so let's see what we get. We get zero, zero, seven over three, take away three is negative two thirds. This is negative five. This is 200 over three and that's one. And so what does the new matrix become? Um, I'm not gonna try to squeeze it in there. So row one and row three change, row two is gonna stay the same. So row one is going to become this. Row two is gonna be all the same values here. And then row three is gonna be these values here. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to that last column. And so we do have to get the one here. 
before we can get the zeros above it. So I'm actually going to multiply by its reciprocal. So that's negative three halves. When you do the reciprocal, the sign does not change. So I'm going to do that times row three to get me my new row three. Um, and do I have more paper? I do not have more paper. So I'm going to have to squeeze this in here. It's OK. So let's see. We have one, zero, negative four thirds. 5, negative 200 over 3, and 0. And then row 2 is going to stay the same. And then the last row is going to change. So 0 times this number is 0. This times that number is 0. This times this will be positive. The 3s will cancel, the 2s will cancel, and I'll just end up with 1 over 1, which is 1. If you don't know for a fact, just do it in your calculator. Times negative three over two, and you get one. Then I'm gonna do um, negative five times negative three over two. I get 15 over two. I'm gonna do 200 over three times negative three over two. I get negative 100. And then one times negative three over two, is negative three over two. Okay, so then now I'm going to go ahead and use this one to change both of these to zeros. So I'm gonna need a positive four thirds times the row with the leading one plus the row I'm trying to change. So that's gonna give me a new row one. Here I'm gonna need a negative seven thirds times the row with the leading one plus the row I'm trying to change to get me my new row two. Now let's do the computations. So zero, zero, four thirds, hmm, four thirds times 15 over two is actually 10. Negative 100 times four thirds is actually negative 400 over three. And then negative three over two times four thirds is negative two. Then row one is gonna go directly underneath. And zero. So this becomes one, zero, zero, 15. That will become negative 600 over three, which is negative 200. And this will be negative two. Now I'm gonna multiply row three by negative seven thirds. So I'm gonna get zero, zero, negative seven thirds, 15 over two times negative seven thirds is negative 35 over two, um, negative 100 times negative seven thirds is 700 over three, and then negative three halves times negative seven over three is positive seven over two. And so row two is going to go directly underneath that. So here we get zero, one, zero, negative 35 over two minus four is negative 43 over two. And then 700 plus 200 over three is 300 and this is seven halves. So let's pair to everybody there. Row one is gonna become this. Row two is going to become this. And then row three is going to become this. And now that I don't have thirds anymore, I shouldn't have any um, repeating decimals. So you can convert this to decimals. Um, and so then your inverse there is going to be um, 15, negative 200, negative two. Um, that is 43 divided by two is negative 21.5. 7 over 2 is 3.5, 15 over 2 is 7.5, negative 100, and then negative 1.5. And if you notice, 
this is what they had for a inverse over here. And it is exactly the same thing as I have. If you look at each component, it's the exact same thing that I have. I just, it took a while to get there. It's not so shortcut like it sounds or like it seems in that in that note. It's just like, oh, here's the inverse because of gauss jordan elimination. Yeah, but gauss jordan elimination takes a bit, right? Um, it's not that easy. And it, we did happen to fit it all on one page. So that was surprising as well. So it wasn't as bad as it could have, I suppose. Um, but once you do have that, you're gonna take that inverse and you're gonna multiply it by your coefficient matrix. So guess what happens? All of those get multiplied by all of those. So let's see, 15 times 10,000. Then we have negative 200 times 730. And then we have negative two times zero. And we add all of these up together. So one, actually, I'm not even gonna type it in there. I'm just gonna go highlight it plus and highlight that one. And if I add zero that I can type in, I get 4,000, which is exactly what they have. Now we're gonna do this row times this column. So negative 21.5 times 10,000 plus uh, 300 times 730 plus um, 3.5 times zero and we get the other 4,000. 7.5 times 10,000 plus negative 100 times 730 plus negative 1.5 times zero, and we get 2,000. And so then this tells you, remember, this is the X matrix. So it's X, Y, and Z. So it tells you that X is 4,000, Y is 4,000, and Z is 2,000. And if you were to solve the original, I mean, all that gauss jordan elimination, you could have just done it with the original matrix, right? Um, it just doesn't seem to have a point when you have a three by three. Um, but when you have a two by two, it can be faster than doing all the gauss jordan elimination, okay? Um, so here's your practices. It says show that B is the inverse of A. So we have to do the products, A, B first. So this one, times this one. So I get two times two, which is six, and then one times negative five, which is negative five. Then two times negative one is negative two, one times two is a positive two. Then five times three is 15, negative, or three times negative five is negative 15. Five times negative one is negative five, and then three times two is six. And so I actually end up with one, zero, zero, one. So that one checks out. Now we have to go check that the other one works as well. So now B goes first, and then A. So three times two is six, and one times five, negative one times five is negative five. That's three, that's negative three. That's negative 10, that's positive 10, that's negative five, and these guys are positive six. So I end up with one, zero, zero, one, which also checks out. So we have verified that they are inverses of each other. Now here, it says to um, find the inverse of the matrix if possible. So we're gonna set it up and do two, one, nine, five, oops. And then a matrix, an identity matrix of the same order. So just a two by two. So you gotta make that one a two. So I'm gonna do one half times row one to get me my new row one. That would be one, one half, one half, zero. You can always double check my computations on your own, but I am gonna go pretty fast just because I know this video is already running pretty long, okay? Now I need this to be zero, so I need a negative nine, row one plus row two to get me my zero in row two. So negative nine, negative nine halves, negative nine halves, and zero, nine, five, zero, and one. Um, this is zero, this is gonna be negative one half, nope, it's gonna be positive one half. 
negative nine halves and one. Um, so then that becomes one, one half, one half, zero, zero, one half, negative nine halves, one. Now I wanna multiply by the reciprocal to turn this into a one. So two over one times row two to get me my new row two. So row one is going to stay the same. And then row two is going to be zero. Flip that over is one. Flip this over is going to be negative nine. And that's going to be two. Again, you can do all the products in the calculator if you need to to get those results. Now I need to make this a zero. So I need a negative one half times row one plus row two to get me that zero in row two. So this is zero, negative one half. That would be positive and then negative one. Again, you can do all those products in the calculator to get these values if you need to. I'm not awful with fractions, so I don't mind doing it in my head. Um, and I'm pretty confident I'll end up with the correct answers. Again, you can add these in the calculator if you need to, but that should be my new row, row two, yes. Oh wait, something happened. I was trying to change row one. So it's actually negative one half, it's just my labels are wrong. Negative one half times the row with the leading coefficient times row one or plus row one so they can turn to zero in row one. I said the right thing, but then I wrote down the wrong subscripts. So it's actually row one that's getting replaced. So one, zero, five, negative one. Zero, one, negative nine, and two. And so then I know that the inverse is gonna be five, negative nine, negative one, and two, okay? You could have also used the shortcut to get the answer, right? If we do this product, that's 10 minus this product, that's nine, I get one. And so you have one over one, and then these guys switch five and two, and these guys change signs, negative one, negative nine. That's just a giant one. And when I multiply each of these guys by one, don't I get the exact same thing? Okay. So you could have done it using the formula, this formula. And you would have gotten the answer a whole lot faster. Okay. But I do want to keep practicing with this row operation because it will be important. Here, again, find the inverse if possible. Um, we can try it. I already know what's going to happen, but we can try it. So negative one, zero, zero. And that's why I don't even have a lot of room here because I already know it's not going to work. You won't know that, but I do. Um, you won't know it until you try. Remember I told you if you try to find the inverse and you end up with a whole roll of zeros on one side, and I told you me saying one side was going to make sense later, because one side of this bar. So if you get all zeros on this left-hand side in any row, then it does not have an inverse, okay? Um, because you can't, once it turns to zeros, you can't get the zero, one, zero, or the one, zero, zero, or the zero, one, zero, zero, one, okay? So if you end up trying to do something and it ends up so that where you were supposed to have a one, there's a zero, you can't continue. You cannot turn a zero into a one. You cannot turn a zero into any, okay? So, um, there's an issue there, but let's see. So first we'll try to get that to be a one. So I'll do um, one over negative one times row one to get me my new row one. One, zero, zero, negative one, zero, zero. Then I would try to make these guys zero. I'm just gonna work with the first one because I already know what's gonna happen. So I would need a negative three times row one plus row two to get me a new row two. When I do that, I'm gonna have negative three, zero, zero, um, positive three, zero, zero, row two goes underneath. And then I end up with zero, 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 three, one, zero. So when I write down the matrix, I'm going to have 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0. And this guy right here cannot be changed into a 1. And the fact that that one cannot be changed into a 1 means um, 
there is no inverse. And that's because I couldn't get the identity on this side, so I can't take whatever's over here as the inverse. Okay. Now, this was one of those problems I was talking about where it says use the inverse matrix and they already give it to you. So I already know that this is gonna be one, negative two, two, negative three times the variable matrix equal to the constant matrix. And they already told me the inverse of this. So we know that we're supposed to have this as the answer. Can you not? Sorry about that. I have someone messing around with things in the office and they're making a lot of noise. I apologize. Um, so they do give you this inverse on this particular problem. And so all I have to do is fill that in. And then I can do the um, product. So when I do the product, it's going to be this times this. So that's negative nine plus 12. Negative nine plus 12 is three. Then I'm gonna have negative six and positive six, so I get zero. So what does that mean? That means X is three and Y is zero. And you can check it. If you plug in three and you plug in zero, you get three minus zero, which is three. If you plug in three here, you get six minus zero, which equals six. So this is actually the solution. Okay, and that is the last practice problem that I have for this section. So that is the end of the video.